Hey everybody, it's April 2nd, 2020. We're down here at Beverly Harbor. It's early in the morning. It's still dark. It's drizzly. It's a little cold. It's high tide. The coast is clear. Look at the dock here. Nobody is docked. And this is a, we have clear sailing here in terms of dragging the plankton net along the dock and seeing what's in the water. So I'm going to collect some plankton for you. We're going to take it back to the lab and we'll magnify it. We'll take a look at it and we'll see what's going on. I've got the our two plankton nets here. I've got our I've got our uh, zooplankton net, got the phytoplankton net, buckets, jars, everything we need. Hopefully I won't be needing that. And check back with me a little later and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, so we're looking at the plankton sample here that we collected. Oh my gosh, this is just like loaded with, we got a comb jelly here. There are a lot of jellies in the water today. Look at this. I'm going to put these guys under the microscope and get a better look at them. There's a comb jelly here. And that's really what's dominating the sample. Just a lot of jelly, well, small jellyfish today. So we'll take a look at this in, in, in microscope and, and get a better look at everything. Look at this guy right here. Look at that. We're back in the lab. We're good to go here. And we've got our scopes and everything. And we'll, we'll take a good look at our plankton sample. And we have our usual suspects, you know, our copepods. Not surprising, the most common animal in the world. And there's the larval form of copepods, saw a lot of those in the sample as well, along with a lot of sea worm larvae. They were, you know, a fair amount of those in the sample. And there were a lot of barnacle larvae um, that were in the sample as well. Now there were these guys here I really have never seen before. I don't think I've saw them before. And it turns out, as I identified them as comma shrimp or hooded shrimp, and they're, they're really interesting. They're about a centimeter long, and they have this hooded head area, and hence the name. And then they have this long tail, and with that big head, it gives them that comma shape, and that's where they get that nickname, uh, the comma shrimp. And the tail is really interesting. It's got it's all it's got all these forks, and the forks are branched. And these are creatures that actually live on the bottom. Well, really the animals that dominated the sample were these jellies that were just throughout the sample and it was just really interesting. And one of the creatures I noticed in the sample was this ephyra. You see it in the middle of the screen here. It kind of looks like a mushroom. It's a yellowish colored jelly and that's actually the larval form of adult jellyfish. But you know jellyfish have an interesting life cycle. They start off over on the left here, you see, they start off with these polyps just growing attached to things, and then they form these stacked polyps called strobilla, and then they morph into these ephyra, which we just saw in that clip, and they bud off and eventually get larger and, and, and mature into uh, a jellyfish that we know and love. And then there's these guys, sarsha. These really were probably the, big, the most common and most numerous in the sample. You know, what's interesting about these guys is they're really not jellyfish. They're like this guy, they're medusa. And medusa are actually a stage in the life cycle of animals called hydrozoans or hydroids. Now, hydroids are branched colonies made up of hundreds or thousands of tiny polyps that grow underwater on docks and rocks and other surfaces. Polyps grab particles drifting by in the currents with their tentacles. They bring it to their mouth, and this is really how they feed. Now, at certain times of year, they will form reproductive polyps, and the colonies will release male and female medusa into the water. The females carry the eggs. The males carry sperm cells, which will then fertilize eggs. They will then grow into larvae and start new colonies somewhere in a new location. Now, being plankton, medusa can drift in currents to, to new locations and help. This way, they can help spread the population and start new colonies in perhaps a better place. So, also on our plankton sample today were these tenophores. The C is silent, it's not pronounced. Their common name is comb jellies. Because on the surface of their bodies, they have these eight rows of these beading combs, which sort of serve as paddles to propel them through the water, but it also provides them with food. It brings food into their mouths. Light reflects off of these combs as they beat. It's kind of interesting. It creates the illusion of bioluminescence, but they don't produce their own light. 
the, the rows of combs are iridescent. They reflect different colors of light in the same way you would see light reflecting off a CD or a DVD. These predators uh, prey on smaller forms of zooplankton like copepods, and in large numbers, comb jellies have been known to wipe out zooplankton populations. And they're very different than the other jellies. They're in a different group altogether than the jellies that we saw prior to this, the Medusa. So that's what's out in our waters these days. Lots of jellies in the water, and it was just pretty interesting. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. Anyway, I'm glad I got a chance to share this with you. Uh, thanks for checking into Blue Lobster Science, and stay safe, everybody.